Welcome back to Unite Star Pro Coaching. This is the fifth tutorial in which we are going to learn the analysis of a continuous beam, which is subjected to different types of loading. In this tutorial, maximum types of loadings will be covered, so that you can start for difficult level problems. Let us consider a beam of span 18.5 meter which is fixed at the ends. And it is carrying a first load of triangular load of 12 kN per meter at a distance of 3 meter from left part. Next load is, uniformly varying load whose value at point C is 4 kN per meter and 7 kN per meter at point D. Span EF is carrying a moment of 15 kN meter, clockwise in nature which is 3.5 meter from point D from point E to point G, a UDL of 26 kN per meter is acting. On the beam FH, an anticlockwise moment is acting with intensity of 10 kN meter. At the last span HB, a point load of 20 kN and a triangular load of 10 kN per meter at start of the span and 0 kN at end of the beam is acting. So, let's analyze the beam using StartPro software. First of all, open the StartPro. Next thing to do is, click on the new project and tick on space. Enter the file name you want to give to your model. I will put it as, Tutorial 5. Now give the location where you want to save your project. I have created a folder called Tutorial 5, in D drive and I am giving this path. You can give any path you want and click OK. Select length unit as meter and force unit as kilo newton, click next, and click finish. Let the Start Pro generate your model with these default settings. There are different views available here, as I discussed in my previous videos. So, to draw a beam, directly select the front view. That is view from positive Z direction. Now, go to Geometry. Close this window. And enter the coordinates as 0, 0, 0. You will get this point called node in Start Pro. There are total 5 numbers of spans in our continuous beam. So, we will draw nodes at each of the span by coordinate system. At the bottom of the window, you can see X, Y, and Z direction. Therefore, to draw the spans of the beam, we will have to enter X coordinates. The first node will be at a distance of 3 meter. Therefore X coordinate will be 3. The next node will be at point D, whose coordinate from starting point of beam is 6 meter, that is, this 3 meter, plus, this 3 meter. Therefore X coordinate of point D will be 6. Similarly, go on adding the length of the spans for the coordinates of the beam. The coordinate of point F will be 11 meter. The coordinate of point H will be 14.5. So enter next coordinate as 14.5. And the last coordinate will be 18.5 which is this point B so enter the coordinate as 18.5. Now, click on that beam symbol here. And draw beam from first node to last node. But, our beam is not a single beam from first to last node, therefore, select the all the nodes by clicking first on the node cursor, and select all the nodes, then go to geometry, and click on break beams at selected nodes, click ok with this command, our beam will be broken into number of spans for which we had given the coordinates. With this, our modeling part is over. Now, go to general. Go to support, click on create, click on fixed, and then add. Select support too. Select the nodes, where you want to give this support. Click assign to selected nodes. Click assign, yes. Similarly, assign the simple support for intermediate points of the beam. For that, again click on create, 
click on pinned and then add select support 3 select the nodes where you want to give this support click assign to selected nodes click assign yes next part is to give loading for that go to load and definition click load case details click add select the load type as none and give any load title i will keep it as load case 1 now click add close click on load case 1 and click on add for the triangular loading click on member load and select linear varying tick on w3 and enter the value as minus 12 the negative sign is because the load is acting in downward direction now select direction as y local and click add for the trapezoidal loading select the same linear varying option take w1 as minus 4 kN per meter and w2 as minus 7 kN per meter now select direction as y local and click add for the clockwise moment on span df click on concentrated moment since the moment is clockwise in nature therefore take p is equal to minus 15 kilo newton meter and it is acting at a distance of 3.5 meter therefore take d1 is equal to 3.5 meter and d2 is equal to zero here d1 is the distance of moment from start point of the beam and d2 is the starting point of the beam select direction as global z direction which is gz direction and click add for the udl in the part ef select uniform force take w1 as minus 26 kN per meter and d1 is equal to 3.5 d2 is equal to 5 and d3 is equal to 0 here is the point from where udl is starting d2 is the point at which udl is finishing and d3 is the starting point of the beam now select direction as global y that is gy and click add for the udl in the part fg select the same uniform force Take W1 as minus 26 kN per meter. Here D1 is equal to 0, D2 is equal to 1.5, and D3 is equal to 0. Here, D1 is the point from where UDL is starting, D2 is the point at which UDL is finishing, and D3 is the starting point of the beam. Now, select direction as global Y that is gy and click add the next loading is the anti-clockwise moment on span fh for that click on concentrated moment since the moment is anti-clockwise in nature therefore take p is equal to 10 kilo newton meter and it is acting at a distance of 1.5 meter therefore Take D1 is equal to 1.5 meter and D2 is equal to 0. Here D1 is the distance of moment from start point of the beam and D2 is the starting point of the beam. Select direction as global Z direction which is GZ direction and click add. The next loading is a concentrated point load of 20 kN on H point. For adding this load select concentrated force take p as minus 20 since the load is acting at just starting point of the beam d1 is equal to 0 meter and d2 is also equal to 0 distance d1 is the distance from start point of the beam and d2 is the starting point of the beam from where your beam is starting now select direction as global y that is gy and click add and close the last load to be assigned is the triangular loading of 10 kN per meter at starting point and there will be zero intensity of load at the end of beam for this triangular loading for adding this load click on linear varying 
take W1 as minus 10 kN per meter and W2 as minus 0 kN per meter. Now, select direction as Y local and click add. Now click on close. With this all the loads are added. As I have said in my previous videos, it's showing question mark here, because, we have not yet assigned these loads to the beam. Select all the forces, one by one. Select beam the beam on which the respective load is acting. Click on assign to selected beams. Assign and, yes. For example this linear load which is triangular is acting on first beam. Therefore, select this load. Select the first beam. Click on assign to selected beams. Click assign. Click yes. Similarly, select the second load. Select this beam. Click on assign to selected beams. Click assign. Click yes. Next, select the third moment. Select third span of beam. Click on assign to selected beams. Click assign. Click yes. Now, select this uniform force of 26 kN per meter. The same beam will be selected. Click on assign to selected beams. Click assign. Click yes. Now, select next uniform force of 26 kN per meter. Select the second last beam. Click on assign to selected beams. Click assign. Click yes. Now, select next moment of 10 kN meter. The same beam will be selected. Click on assign to selected beams. Click assign. Click yes. The last two loads are acting on last span of the beam. Therefore, select this load. Select this last beam. Click on assign to selected beams. Click assign. Click yes. Similarly, select the last load. The same beam will be selected. Click on assign to selected beams. Click assign. Click yes. Now, as you can see, the moments are not visible on the beam. To make it visible, scale the loading by click on this symbol. Now they are looking in yellow color. The last part before analysis is to assume some suitable section for the beam. For that, go to property, click on define, select rectangle, select material as concrete. I am assuming the section as 0.23 meter by 0.38 meter. You can assume any standard size you want. Click add, close. Select this section. Select all the beams. Click assign to selected beams. Assign, and yes. Now, our beam is ready to analyze. Go to commands, analysis. Perform analysis, no print. OK. Click on Analyze, Run Analysis, and click Save. Wait for the beam to analyze. It may take some time to analyze, depending upon your computer speed. After the analysis, check for the errors. See, there are no errors, therefore our analysis is correct. Go to Post Processing Mode, click Done, Apply, OK. First. We will check the deflection of beam. The deflection symbol is already on here. So, directly go to results, view value, beam results, take on maximum resultant displacement. Click on annotate, close. See it's showing the value of deflection directly on the in this table itself. here. Click on maximum relative displacements. To scale the deflection in the diagram. Press Ctrl button on your keyboard and roll the mouse cursor. You may also check deflection values at different points in the beam. For that, click on all relative displacements. See, there are different deflection values here. Next part is to check shear force and bending moment values. For that, click on beam. Click on maximum bending moment in table. To scale the bending moment diagram, press Ctrl button on your keyboard and roll the mouse cursor. Similarly, to check maximum shear forces, 
click on maximum shear forces in table. To scale the shear force diagram, press control button on your keyboard and roll the mouse cursor. To know values of shear force and bending moment at different points in the beam, click on all. See, there are different values of shear force and bending moment is available. In this way, you can analyze a continuous beam with different types of loading using Start Pro. Thanks for watching this video. Please like, share, and subscribe for more Start Pro tutorial videos. If you have any questions regarding this video, please feel free to ask and comment your doubts in the comments section below. Thank you.